This video is broken into two parts. The first part is the rules, which I'm going to super duper explain. If you've seen my other videos on how to play games, you know I over explain things to the point of making it so super simple that there's no way you're not going to get it. The second part of this video is me playing through a few rounds so that you get the game. So let's get going. The first thing you need to know about hearts is that it's usually a four player game. You can play with three players, but the game is the most fun when it's four players. The object of the game is to get the fewest points possible. You are playing up to a hundred points. The person who hits a hundred points loses, and the person who has the lowest amount of points when the that first person hits a hundred points is the winner. Hearts is a trick-taking game, and I have a video on how trick-taking games work. If you already know how to play trick-taking games, maybe you can skip ahead 30 seconds because I'm going to explain how a trick-taking game works. A trick-taking game works where everybody goes around, usually in a clockwise fashion, and lays down a card one at a time. The person who goes first leads. They lay down a card, and essentially the simplest rule of this is that everybody then going around in the clockwise motion must then lay down a card of the same suit. So if I lay down, say, a 10 of diamonds, the person to my left must lay down a diamond as well as the person across from me and then the person to my right. If they don't have that suit, then they can lay down another suit, but they can't lay down another suit unless they don't have the leading suit. At the end of all four cards coming around, the suit that was played first, so in this case, I'm, I'm saying I played a 10 of diamonds. The suit that was played first, whatever the highest diamond is, wins the trick, meaning they get all four of those cards. And they get to take all those four, four cards, and that's a trick. They also get to lay down a card in the next round, meaning they get to lead, meaning they get to pick what suit they want to lay down that everyone must follow in the next round. And this is the basic of all trick-taking games. Now, all of these trick-taking games do it slightly differently. For example, in the game of Bridge, which is a trick-taking game, it's about how many tricks can you win. The thing is, in Hearts, it's not about how many tricks can you win. What you're trying to do is get the lowest amount of points. It's sort of the opposite, where it's not about winning all the tricks. It's actually about just not getting points, which I'm going to explain in a second. So let's talk about points, because in, in hearts, like I said, you want to get the fewest points possible. So I want you to think of the points not as like points that you win, but I want you to think of them as, say, penalty points. So in other words, you don't want to get a penalty point. You don't want to get a point. You either get nothing, which is great, or you get a penalty point. So what is a penalty point? How does this work? Well, the game is called hearts, and believe it or not, the penalty points, the cards you don't want to get, are hearts. Every heart is worth one penalty point. There's 13 hearts in a deck of 52. Therefore, there's 13 penalty points, one point for every heart. In addition, and this is important, there is also one card that is worth 13 penalty points. So you don't want this card, the Queen of Spades. As we play tricks, which we're going to do in a second, you want to make sure that you don't win any trick that has the queen of spades, and you don't want to win many tricks that force you to keep hearts. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, keep listening. It will soon. Let's get on to a few other important rules of this game. The game of hearts works with everybody being distributed all 52 cards in the deck. Everybody, after they're dealt their 52 cards, needs to pick three cards and pass it to the player on their left. So in a circle, I'm going to give three of my cards to the person on the left, but I'm also going to receive three cards to the person on the right. In the second round of cards that we play, it goes the opposite way. You're going to give three cards to the person on your right, and you're going to receive three cards from the person on your left. In the third round, you're going to exchange cards across the table, and the two people on your left and right are going to exchange cards across the table. And a fourth round, no cards are exchanged. If you need to say you're playing, to get to 100 points, you want to play more than four rounds, then it starts again. The fifth round, you would pass to the left. The sixth round, you'd pass to the right, and, and so forth. I also want to point out that some people play slightly different. I've also played where 
The first round you pass to the left, the second round you pass across the table, and the third round you pass to the right. So now that you, we've gone over the fact that you've been dealt 13 cards, and we've talked about what the penalty points are, you may have some penalty points in the hand that you've been dealt, but that doesn't mean you're going to keep those, because ultimately you may lay those down and not win that trick, which is kind of what you want to do here. You don't want to win the trick that has penalty cards in it. But if you think you have a round where there's going to be no penalty cards, you do want to try to win maybe that trick so that you have control to make sure that you don't get into a situation where you're forced to, to win tricks where you have penalty cards. You following with me so far? The object of the game is avoid taking any tricks that have penalty cards. Avoid taking any tricks that have hearts or the queen of spades. So now that you've given either cards to the left or the cards to the right or the cards across the table or whatever the round is, the person who has the two of clubs starts the game. That is always the person who goes first and it is always that gets played first. Now, a couple of important things about following suit. In the very first round, you may not play any penalty points in the first round, not even if you don't have any cards in the suit. So if somebody lays down a club and you don't have a club, you still can't lay down a heart or the queen of spades. Penalty cards do not come in play in the first round. So the person who starts with the two of clubs basically is opening the game so that everybody can start throwing out cards and there aren't going to be any points in that first round. That's important. You'll see that get played out later. And we've pretty much done gone over all the rules except for two. And so here are the other two. Number one is, and this is pretty much straightforward with a lot of trick games, which is once all the cards are dealt and you've done the first round with the two of clubs and now someone else's turn to lead with a card, they cannot lead with a heart until at least one other heart has been played in this round. They call it being broken. In other words, you cannot start a trick with playing with a heart. Somebody needs to literally, therefore, run out of cards in a suit and are forced to play a heart or choose to play a heart because they don't have that card of that suit. And they call that broken. You've broke the hearts. So now that you've broke the hearts, now you can start to start with hearts. So that's important to learn. You can't start a suit with a heart until somebody has broken it. So to put it another way, if it's your turn to lead and no heart has been played yet in the game, you can't select a heart to play first. And, and let me also just say that in some variations of the game, people also say that you can't play the queen of spades until the hearts have been broken with a heart. So, so that's a rule you also want to ask your friends. And the final thing I'm going to say, if you do end up getting penalty cards and you do end up getting, get this, all 13 hearts and the queen of spades, meaning you got 100% of the penalty cards, then it's called shooting the moon. And get this, you don't get any penalty points. But your three other players, they get 26 points each. If you can get all 13 hearts and the queen of spades, you don't get any penalty points. But everybody else gets hit super hard with 26 penalty points. It's super risky, though, because if you go for it and you get the queen of spades plus 12 of the 13 hearts, well... So let's go ahead and let's start a brand new game. And at this point, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not getting into strategy. That will be for the next video. We're just going to talk about the mechanics of it. So everyone's been dealt 13 cards. My cards are here on the bottom. They're face up. Normally, nobody would see them because they're in my hands, but they are here. I've got a player on the left, a player in front of me, a player on the right. We are not partners. We are all playing individually. In the beginning of the game, I see the app here has our scores. We're all at zero. And it starts in the first round with me passing three cards to the left. So I'm going to pick three of my cards and pass them to the left. 
in my other videos, I talk about the strategy of what generally is what you want to pass to the left or to the right. What do you want to get rid of? I'm going to just say that I personally like to pass high cards and I will do that here. Uh, and I'm going to explain why in the other video, but I'm going to get rid of that queen of spades, which first of all, I hate. And I'm going to get rid of the high card, the highest three highest cards in my hand. And I'm going to pass them off. What do I get? Well, interestingly enough, I also got three really hard cards back. So I now received these three new cards, the ace of spades, the jack and the queen of hearts. And now the person who has the two of club, whoever has that two of clubs, leads. And now that they've led, it's now my turn. This game actually shades what I'm not allowed to play. And in this particular case, since they led with a club, I must with a club. And so they have shaded anything that's not a club at this point that I can play. So I'll just play with a three and the highest of that leading wins. Somebody played the two of clubs. The ace of clubs was the highest. Therefore, the Ace of Clubs person won. He took all the cards. But in hearts, does it matter? No, because you're just trying not to get penalty points. So because he took the Ace of Spades, therefore he took the trick. He gets to lead on the next one. He lays out a diamond, a 10 of diamonds. So everyone has to play their diamonds. As you can see on the bottom here, they've shaded out anything except the diamonds because you have to play with the suit. When you look at something like a 10 of diamonds and a jack of diamonds, I'm forced to play diamonds. And I can see that my four and six will not win this trick. From the point of view of hearts, this is simple. I'm not going to get hit with any penalty points because there's no hearts involved and I'm not going to win it. He won with the ace of uh, diamonds. So he lays out the next card, which is the four. And he's laid out a four of spades, a nine of spades, and a ten of spades. And this is where trick-taking games get interesting. I have the winning one, which is this ace of spades. I could play it. I'll win the trick. Again, in hearts, that's not important. What's important is did you get hit with penalty points? I will not get hit with any penalty points. Or I could actually choose one of these lower spades. I won't win it, but I don't get control on the next round either. So I'm going to go ahead for the sake of having fun and win this trick. And so I've won that again, no points, but now it's my turn to lead. Now you'll notice that on the right here, they have shaded my hearts. And the reason is, is I can't play those hearts. And the reason is why? Because we just talked about it earlier. Until a heart has been broken, you cannot lead with a heart. And so far there has been no hearts played on the table. Therefore, I cannot lead with a heart. So I'm going to choose to lead with a, another heart, diamond. And everyone who has a diamond must play their diamonds. Going And nine of diamonds is the highest, so he won. And he now leads with a seven of spades, to which the person to my right is playing the jack of spades. If you look at the spades that I have remaining, there's no way I'm going to win this trick, but it doesn't matter because it's not about the tricks. It's about not getting penalty points. So I'll just lay down the eight and let the, whoever gets the highest spade take it. Now he starts off again with a seven of diamonds. Notice that no hearts have been on the table yet. No hearts have been broken. But, but I may be about to break it because he laid down a seven of diamonds. I know that I don't have a diamond because I don't have a diamond. I can play any of these things. So I might as well get rid of one of my hearts because I don't want to ever accidentally get a penalty point with it. I'm going to lose this trick. Whoever wins this trick now is stuck with that heart. And so the person to my left got stuck with a heart. He got stuck with one penalty point. You can see here now where it says on the left plus one, the person to my left has one penalty point. But the point is he did get to start again and he got to lead off and he led with the two of diamonds. Opponent across from me, he's out of diamonds or he would have played a diamond. So what did he do? He threw a heart in, sort of like I just did before. The person on the right, they still have diamonds. They had a queen of diamonds. So they are forced to play it. And I still have no other diamonds. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time is I'm going to hit this guy with a heart, which is he's going to get a penalty. So the person to the right had the highest diamond, the queen of diamonds. Now they have two penalty points. So now the person on the right has two penalty points. But they do get to lead the next trick. Now, look what they've done. They've led with an ace of hearts. Why did they lead with hearts? Because hearts have been broken. Hearts have been played on the table. And now you can start with it. So by him leading with a heart, it's pretty much sort of one of the worst things you could do. Because everybody must now play green suit, which is a heart. And because you have the ace, you're probably going to win this trick. And therefore, you're about to hit with probably as up to potentially four points. I'm going to hit. And sure enough, 
with a whole lot, but he gets to go again. I don't have any more hearts at this point, so I'm just going to start throwing in cards. Now, that Queen of Spades is still there. Someone's going to have to play that. And there it is. So he was hit with 13 penalty points. Now look at the top. He's got the most penalty points. I've been lucky. I have none. I can't play. I can't follow in suit, so I'll just keep going. And that's how this game is played. So to sum it up, I was hit with zero points. The person to my left had four hearts, so that's four penalty points. The person across from me got that queen of spades. That's 13. And the person to my right got nine. Now, this isn't the only video I have on this game. Check out these videos right here that you can watch right now that will take you deeper into more advanced strategies and gameplay. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe. See you in the next one.